so uh, I have returned from the sneak peek, which by all admissions is was a rather subpar sneak peek. I got like bugger all out of my pools and ended up finishing with uh, went uh, X and three at the event. So um, not a very good sneak peek for me. But I'm just going to get over that because since then I also had dinner, had some sleep, but then only got three hours of which and my body decided to be an asshole and wake me up and make me freaking spend a majority of the morning being bored as shit. So, um, what does one do? Well, well I'm just going to go ahead and bring that uh, Cyframe deck list that I said I was going to bring along. Uh, unfortunately, I did, I did not actually succeed in getting this deck fully completed, so there will be some proxies. Um, and so I figured I'd just, like, I figured I'd just get it out there anyway, um, because this is now pretty much how I'm going to end up doing, um, fun deck, uh, lists from now for the foreseeable future. Um, reason being is because usually my Thursday locals are fun locals. Um, the problem, uh, that is it. Well, it's not a problem, but um, that's now a uh, not a thing anymore because we're coming into uh, regional season, testing for LDS the week this weekend, which for the record I'm not actually going to because of reasons. Um, and so now Thursdays, everybody's just going to start playing meta again and practicing for that sort of stuff, the regionals, YCS, blah, 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 blah. So, um, this is the only way I'm going to be able to present uh, more fun lists, unless I decide to play a fun list just for the hell of it, um, which I'm not going to be doing this Thursday just because I want to help those that are going to the LLDS in, in practicing for them. But um, for something like this uh, Cyframe list, it is unfortunately just going to have to be something I just present to you uh, as is, and is basically, for the most part, a theory brew because I've not played a whole lot with this deck. So... Uh, after that long-winded introduction, we're going to start off with the triple Cyframe Driver. Now, for those who are not familiar with this deck that are probably wondering why the hell I'm running a playset of what looks to be a very bricky um, vanilla that you cannot do much with, uh, it's actually because you need you need to run three of this. Uh, the reason for this is because the whole point of the deck is to do that. Basically, all of these Cyframe gear monsters are hand traps that work while you have no monsters, and they special summon themselves, as well as, uh, from the hand, as well as a side frame driver from hand, deck, or graveyard. So, if you don't have, if you have, if you don't have one of, one of these handy, uh, you're not going to be able to play, which is really, really bad. Um, and you'll understand the, uh, urgency of this as we go further into the deck. Only other purpose it serves is to be a 2500 beat stick, which is actually pretty decent on its own merits. I actually lost because I... Um, I lost on Thursday because I bricked and actually got beat down by one of these, which was kind of shitty, but oh, what can you do? Now, let me actually see if I've got the room here, because I reckon I could put all of the Cyframe gears here and just sort of go through a full explanation as to what they do. So as I'm putting these down, basically the uh, premise of the uh, Cyframe gears is that they react entirely based on what your opponent does. Um, they react to a whole bunch of different actions that your opponent uh, does, and generally what they do is they stop your opponent from doing stuff. Uh, Alpha is the only one that doesn't, and I'll start with Alpha because this is the one that regardless of how the meta would change shape and whatnot, you can maybe cut down and add on to any of these other ones that negate stuff. Alpha is the one you want to run three of all of the time. Because this reacts when your opponent normal special summons a monster. You special summon this from your hand, as well as the Cyframe Driver. And then you get to add any other Cyframe card from your deck to your hand. So this is your Stratos. But tailored to actually support this deck. Um, they, it is a tuner, like all the other Cyframe monsters. And so the idea is that you're supposed to synchro with them. The problem is, all with, of the Cyframe gear monsters banish themselves as well as the the driver that they summon during the end of the turn that they are summoned by this effect. Um, so you've got to kind of work your way around that. Thankfully, the deck is running stuff that allows you to work your way around it. Conveniently, one of those uh, bonuses is that it is a Psychic-themed deck. Um, and you'll probably understand if you've played the deck before. So... As for the other four, these all react to the opponent and negate their stuff. Gamma is the monster effect negator. 
it works for any monster effect, whether it's on the hand, whether it's from the hand, in the graveyard, banished, wherever. You just chain this, it negates that stuff and destroys it if that's considered to be relevant. Um, so that's what that is. Beta is the Sakuretsu armor on, I would say, legs, which is funny because it actually does attach to the legs. If you take a look at the artworks of the Synchro Monsters, you'll know that this is, you'll see that this is attached to the legs. Um, but yeah, this is a Sakuretsu armor, but on top of that, it negates the attack, obviously, and also ends the battle phase. So it's basically a Swift Scarecrow and a Sakuretsu armor all in the one monster. And at the same time, it's also going to summon shit. And also, if you have the correct support, you can Synchro. Um, Epsilon is the trap, and it's the only one that I don't run three of because traps aren't quite as prevalent, you can understand. Uh, Delta is the spell negator, and that's probably in future lists going to uh come going to come out that being said if magic specters are, are going to be a bit of an asshole -ish, um deck then obviously delta will remain at three because that just stops pendulum scales from being a thing um aside from that the only thing that they really have different is that level ones so you can make level seven synchros and these are level two so you can make level eight synchros um, their attack power and defense power, are, their defense power is completely irrelevant. Their attack power is only relevant in one situation, which we will discuss when that time becomes relevant. But for now, I believe I've gone through everything I possibly can about the Scythe frame gears. So let me take the moment to put these all away. Now for the supporting cast, monster-wise, I'm running the three one at rabbit. This is a pure, uh, Scythe frame deck. Um, there is another build that runs you know, Senju's, that topped an ARG event recently. Um, I don't have a list for that one of my own quite yet. Um, so for now, it's just basically just the pure one. I, I really only intended this to be sort of a fun sort of um, list. So I probably won't put together you know, Senju's unless I'm considering, unless I seriously consider making this competitive. Um, but Wine at Rabbit is basically just designed to be something you just banish off the foot off the field it's basically just board presence that you can get rid of when it suits you and so if you have the one you can just banish it your mo your monster zone is completely empty which makes your side frame gears live you cannot use any of your side frame gears if you have monsters on the board and so rabbit just sort of fits that uh bill effectively it's also a 1400 header so uh if your opponent's really uh, stuck for what they're trying to do. Um, like if they try to use monster effects, you can just negate it. If they try to attack, you just negate. So from there, you, it just frees them up yourself up to hit your opponent for 1400 using this. So it's very kind of, it, it's, it's all kinds of awesome in this deck. Uh, and then lastly, monster wise is the triple card card D because, uh, 99% of the time that you special summon in this deck, you're doing it during your opponent's turn. Um, the only sort of confliction that this has is if you're looking to attack. Um, but then again, but, but of course, you're actually looking to open this. That's basically the primary reason why you're running three. And also you need to, um, if you do get sort of blown out, this also helps you try to recover and uh, get started again. So that's the reason for the three of those. Pretty much the same thing as we enter the spells with the triple pot of duality. Again, it's literally you special 99% of the time on your opponent's turn. So this is really not going to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. This is just going to get you doing your hand traps, which you're then going to use on your opponent's turn when when they try to do something and you're just going to say no. Um, next, we have the field spell of the deck. Triple side frame circuit. Now this thing is all kinds of ridiculous. This is basically one of the two ways in the deck that you fix the whole cards getting banished um, shtick at the end of the turn. Because what Cyframe Circuit does, when you actually special summon a Cyframe monster to your side of the field, you can then immediately, after this effect resolves, synchro summon using Cyframe monsters you control. And you can synchro into anything. That's what makes this deck so ridiculously silly. Because it gives you the ability to black rose your opponent's board on their turn. So they just have themselves sent off then you just take it immediately off of them when they're about to enter their battle phase they can't do anything they absolutely cannot do anything um the other effect is really not that relevant but it is actually pretty nice um and that is if a side frame monster you control battles i believe it says at the start of the damage set yeah it does um just by discarding a side frame monster then the side frame monster that 
is currently battling uh, gains the attack of the one that you discarded. So basically, if you've got uh, one of the Cyframe Synchros, you just discard a Cyframe Driver, they've just picked up 2,500 attack points. You discard like a Gamma, there's a plus 1,000. It literally turns all these hand traps into, I'm not going to say honest, but they're more like colutes because they just sort of apply um, specific amounts of attack as opposed to honest, which is literally just one sort of stable amount just relevant to what the opponent has. Um, so yeah, this thing is really, really silly. Uh, next, as for the other, what well, well, generally known card, is the Psychic Field Zone. A lot of people play three of this, and I don't blame them. Uh, I would play three if I had three, but I've only got these two copies that I found in my common draw. Um, which, for Pointless Trivia, are the two copies that I pulled in my first ever video. My, um, Extreme Victory box opening all the way back in 2011, I think it was. Good lord, it's been... The time, the time flies by. But anyways, Psychic Field Zone is relevant in this deck because you target two of your banished monsters. But they both have to be Psychic. One of them is a Tuner, one of them a non-Tuner. Sends them back to the graveyard and then summons a Synchro with the equivalent level. So if you don't have your circuit and you have your stuff banished, this is your alternate way of going into it. Um, hence why I said 99% of the time you special summon because you may find yourself in a situation where you need these. Um, so it does only work, it does only make psychic type synchros though. So Cypher and Circus is still better if you want to make the Black Rose play or if you want to make something like Stardust, um, just to protect something like if you've, you don't really run a whole lot of traps in here. So the whole idea of vanities isn't really, um, a topic for discussion here, but you obviously, obviously will be citing some, um, hand trap, there's some, uh, floodgates to deal with, um, uh, meta stuff. So you could easily make something like Stardust or Stardust Spark Dragon um, with the with that and just stop that. But you can't do that with Field Zone. But what you can do is you can make your Cyframe Synchro Monsters. And those are some pretty deadly monsters in and of themselves. So that's what makes Cyframe Field Zone very, very powerful in this deck. Um, this is one of the, I suppose, sort of tech cards. I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, Cyframe players use this. Uh, I know the only other Cyframe player at my locals uses this. And it's pretty good uh decent card it's called psychic path uh it's basically a cliff lot scout for the deck if you pay it 100 life points it selects up to two of your banished psychic time monsters and add them straight to your hand so it's basically and if you basically top deck into this you have literally top decked another cyframe gear um and cyframe driver and the same sort of thing it's basically like a pot of greed but you get to choose what the hell you get to do hence the old whole idea of the um uh, Clifford Scout, although I think I just attributed that to the fact that you pay 800 life points. Um, but yeah, this is Savage. This is another really good way to get your banished stuff back. Um, this is probably out of the stuff to actually get stuff out of the banished pile. This is probably the worst in all honesty because yes, it gets you your um, hand trap back, but if you don't have the circuit or a field zone to sort of back that up, um, then this is pretty much just only going to be there to get your negation stuff back. I mean, if you already have a field zone, you'll use the field zone because you'll make the synchro, which is just going to render this dead. So this is still sort of a debatable one. Um, it's entirely play of reference. You don't have to play it if you don't want to. I think the only reason I'm actually running it is because I don't have the third um, field zone. Uh, as for traps, I'm running the three copies of the best trap in the deck, which is Cyphrom Overload. For some reason, I did not pull a single one of this from these from my High Speed Riders box. And I was supposed to get a play set from someone and I completely forgot to ask them about that. Um, so that was me being an idiot. But yeah, Cyphrome Overload is ridiculous. Um, it has one on board effect, which is once per turn, banish Cyframe monster from your hand uh, or face upon your side of the field, I think it says. Yes. Now target a card on the field and banish it face down. Now let me re repeat that. Face down. So because of this, you cannot confirm whether those set monsters are of an archetype of a specific type. So if Necros was relevant, you could banish Shurik. They can't add it back with anything. It's gone pretty much for the entirety of the game. You can do this to Deneb. I don't know how they'd get, how Satellanites would get stuff back from the banished part, but you could do this to like a Deneb or an Altair or like a Triver. Triver's savage, actually, because some players, you know, can just act like they can make a triver and then just chain call the haunted to bring back like 
diamond or something like that. Um, if you've hit that diamond or triver or whatever with overload beforehand, that's not going to be a thing. Um, it's very a very, very savage card, and that's just its first effect. The second effect is even more brutal. You can banish it to add any Cypher card from your deck to your hand, except another copy of this. Now, when you see the first um, monster in this extra deck, you'll understand how stupid this is, because this combined with that monster um, equates to some stupid stuff. And it actually gets around the um, stipulation on that card that says you cannot use it the turn that's sent to the graveyard. So that's another thing. This is the... I actually am probably... I. I don't want to go ahead and just sort of take credit and say, oh, I'm the first one that came up with this. I am like a freaking genius. Worship me or anything. Someone's obviously probably... Someone's probably come up with this before I have. But this is just something that I found in my draw of traps. And I figured I'd give it a cr crack. It's called Bright Future. This targets two of your banished psychic type monsters. It returns both those targets to the graveyard and then lets you draw a card. So the advantage that this has over... Uh, Psychic Path is that while Psychic Path confirms that you will have a hand trap in your hand, at the same time, if your opponent times their mind crush well, they can rip that hand trap straight out of your hand and you pretty much just go minus out of that and you're going to be shit out of luck. With this, you're impervious to mind crush and when you have uh, negated something during your opponent's turn and have had that banish, you draw for turn. You flip this, you put those monsters back, and then you draw again. And unless you draw into something like uh, Psychic Field Zone, which would have been infinitely better in that situation, um, it's going to get you further into your deck. It's going to get you to your card cards. It's going to get you to your pot of dualities. It's going to get you to more hand traps. It's going to get you further into your deck and progress your game state. That's the uh, theory behind it. Um, obviously, I haven't actually had much of an opportunity to test it, um, but theory, it actually plays a pretty damn integral role for something that I just sort of stumbled across and thought, you know what, that's actually a good card. Um, plus, it actually feels this. This Psychic Overload is basically a mini Jar of Avarice for the deck, or mini Pot of Avarice or something. Uh, targets three Psychics in the graveyard, shuffles them all back, and then draws two cards. So this is actually not too bad either. It, you want to use this to get back your uh, hand traps, you don't really want to use it to get back anything else unless you really need the draw power to get something in your hand so that you can make a play during your opponent's turn. Um, aside from that, you really want to just recycle your hand traps because your drivers are fine at where they are in the grave. That The um, the frame gears can just pick it up from there. Um, and you don't want to really use it on your synchros because your synchros can actually put themselves back on the extra deck with their own effects. So... That is the entire main deck. I bull I want to say that that's 40 cards. Um, so for the extra deck, now for the most part, about 90% of the synchro summons that you do are going to be for the uh, Psy Frame Lord Synchro Monsters. Um, aside from that, for you'll probably summon Black Rose to, to nuke your opponent's board every once in a while. But for the most part, it's really just open season for what you want to run in this. It's entirely up to player preference. There are a handful of cards in here that are that players would consider staples either just relevant to the meta or in general um but this is basically what i went with i started with the two copies of sign friend Lord omega simply because you don't need three i don't have a third one but um i don't think you would need three of this anyway um this is a rather savage card in all of itself if you, uh once per turn during your main during either player's main phase uh you can just banish this card from your field and um, any random card from the opponent's hand face up until your next standby phase. Now, this is pretty savage because it lets you see, it basically lets you see what your opponent's got. Now, if you're running my crush, which I'm not just because of uh, frame constraints, um, you could banish this, pluck any random card out of your opponent's hand, and then as soon as they get it back, you already know what it is, so you can just mind crush it and get rid of it. Or you can have two of these on the board. Because if you have one, you can ban it. If you if you have the two, you can have one banish, remove that card from play, and then the second one can use the second effect, and that is once per turn during the opponent's standby phase, you can target a banished card and return it to the graveyard. So it's basically just ripping cards out of your opponent's hand 
in a way that makes wind up loop look like a friggin' leopard or some shit. I've got no idea. Um, but yeah, it's pretty savage. Uh, the other thing that, the other useful application is that you can use this to send your Psy frame overload back to the graveyard. And because it says return to the graveyard and not send, you can then immediately banish that uh, Psy frame overload to get any uh, hand trap you want to your hand. And from there, you can just immediately banish the Omega. So you're live you've basically just gotten free searches and you're at pretty much full force because you're going to rip your opponent a new arsehole with these things. They're 2800 beat sticks. They are savage. And even if your opponent mirror forces them, their final effect, they can just send any card anywhere in the graveyard uh, back to the deck along with itself. Just go straight back into the deck. Um, so that card is really freaking brutal. You may have seen it um, in Infernoid, so you may still be seeing actually have found yourself to be familiar with this um but in this deck it's just ridiculous it really is designed for this deck um so i'm running the one copy of angel of zero because uh if you're going to continually banish your opponent's stuff uh you can make this actually pretty damn large um i've had this for the last year and have not been able to fit it into any deck whatsoever and i finally have i actually have a use for this damn thing so it's a, it's, it's a pretty good card um as for actually getting itself banished, it's a bit eh. You don't really need to walk. It's really just sort of meant to be win more beat stick just to get over stuff. It would be so much more relevant if Cliff Orts was still a thing and Towers was a, a thing because then if you had enough banished stuff, you could just get over Towers. Um, but it would take like seven banished cards or something like that just to match up the Towers, so it wouldn't really matter for a good Towers out. Uh, make the Thought Ruler Arch Fiend. Uh, Thought Ruler Arch, I don't think it's a staple in this deck just because if you have this and this against BA, uh, you pretty much win because they can't target any of your stuff with like, like they can far for it, which is okay. But um, if they try to wing blast, Rick, keep right, Karma Cup, blah, 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 he's just going to say no. He's just going to say get the fuck out. That's literally all that he is going to do. Um, we have Scrap Dragon for spot removal. You can even, you can even get itself off the board and make, um, and make your hand traps live, so it's really, really kind of useful. Stardust Dragon can make your hand traps really freaking useful because it just tributes itself to negate destruction. Hey, you've got an empty board. Um, then we have Colossal Fighter. This is my opinion to staple. If you can make level eight synchros, um, you will need to run this because you use this to crash into Forerunner. And then you get this thing back and they will probably get, I don't know, maybe you like a farm girl. So you ram into the farm girl. Now, if they're dumb enough to banish the thing to put another Forerunner on board, you just cause a replay, and you smash into the Forerunner. That dies. It comes back. The Forerunner probably gets another Farm Girl. And then they're just going to continue to minus it like an idiot. Um, this isn't quite as viable anymore, though, because of Dark Destroyer, which is unfortunate. But then again, if your opponent... It, 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 this is Cosmo we're talking about. If they're going to drop Dark, Dark Destroyer, you're pretty much all kinds of fucked. So... It's good for most of the other stuff, um, but just Dark Destroy is really just kind of ick. Uh, then the Crimson Blader, because high level stuff, kind of just get that out of the way. Um, and then for the sevens, playing the double Psycho Emerald Zeta. Now this is literally the com completely and utterly inferior to Psycho Emerald Omega, but you still have to run it because you can make tons of level sevens in this deck. And Zeta, like it's inferior, but it's still not too bad. So this thing can banish itself, uh, I believe it actually, yeah, because this one actually um, banishes itself plus a face-up attack position monster the opponent controls. Uh, it has to be switched to summon as well. So it's basically sort of the same stipulations as um, 101. Um, so it just banishes those things. So in that regard, it's actually good because if your opponent's got an Xyz monster, you can essentially just galaxy eyes it. And uh, when it comes back, it doesn't have any Xyz materials left. So this is really good to get over Flare Metal Dragon. That's straight off the top of the, my head. You can just get over Flare Metal Dragon with it. No excess materials, so you can just blow it off the board. Um, and and, they, and then, and then uh, it itself can also recycle itself, um, although it will only uh, put... Uh, it actually puts Cypher cards back to the hand. So 
uh, if it's a new, if, yeah, I, 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 I can't talk. Let, let me just, let's just read out the actual recycling effect. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one other side frame card in your graveyard. Return this card to the extra deck, and if you do, add that target to your hand. Now, that wasn't so difficult, was it? Good job, brain. <laughs> but yeah, uh, very solid. Um, gets stuff back to hand. Um, kind of just makes me wonder if Psychic Pass is even worth running if you can just get raw power um, off stuff. So the other sevens are Black Rose Moonlight. Kind of the weakest level seven here, in all honesty. Um, it's still got its uses. Uh, Black Rose easily the best level 7 of the deck aside from Zeta of course but the ability to synchro summon on your opponent's turn the ability to make this on your opponent's turn is just balls out freaking stupid just ask old Tengu plant players from a few years ago um they'll they'll, they'll tell you all about it <laughs> um then we have Arc Michael works with the uh light aspect of the deck uh, we then have the Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, which doesn't quite serve as much of a purpose anymore because Construct is no longer a thing. And then lastly, I play the Psychic Life Transfer. Now, I believe I've seen three other lists in Cypher. One of them was just Andrew. Uh, one of them was the guy who I think he, like, topped a winner mat thing at a YCS or something like that. And then there was someone, and then there was the one from, I think it was um, Jamie the Kid. Now, Jamie the Kid used... Um, Blood Mephist as his sort of option in time. That other guy who won the uh, winner map thing was using, uh, was it Fortune Tomb? Uh, I think Fortune Tomb is terrible. And Blood Mephist is Blood Mephist. So, fucked if I can get the bloody money to get Blood Mephist. So, this is my option for going into time as a Psychic Life Transfer. Uh, once per turn, banish a Psychic type monster from your graveyard to gain 1200 life points. So, not only does this give you extra life, it fuels stuff like this, and this, and this. So you get value. You get value now, and then you get extra value later if you're able to pull it off. So if you've got a circuit on the board, it might actually be a bad idea if... the Like, the best time to drop this is if you have a fair idea of how much time is left in the round. If there's maybe, like five minutes left in the round you make this you start setting your stuff up and then when you go into time you've already got a nice life point buffer over your opponent assuming that this has survived it is only 2400 so it's not that difficult to get over but assuming this has survived you've got stuff in your banished pile so all you need to do is top deck field zone or bright future or something like that field zone's easily the best and then from there you just make any of these big level eight synchros and just beat over your opponent, and then you win. Um, this is entirely relevant because of how slow this deck is. You will almost always go into time. So that's what makes this card good. And with that, I will bring an end to this deck list. Um, because this is not a tournament um, report with the deck list, I am not going to be including a side deck because, yeah, I, there's not much point in having a side deck. The one... Uh, I suppose one other reason is because I haven't actually got a complete side deck for this deck. I'm still sort of working on things with it. Um, and so uh, the, the the thing I really wanted to just focus on was the main and the extra deck themselves and just how the uh, deck itself functioned. And I think I did that relatively well. So um, that is about it for this list. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, hopefully I managed to explain the uh, intricacies of this deck well enough. And so with that out of the way, I shall see you for whatever it is that I do next. And holy shit, that's a freaking long ass video. <sighs> Apologies, I have a tendency to go on pointless tangents. Um, what can you do? Bye.